This video presents the advantages of laparoscopic assistance during an Altmeyer procedure. We present the case of a 76-year-old female who presented with a full thickness rectal prolapse with associated severe fecal incontinence. The patient had a background of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and so she was deemed to be unsuitable for a prolonged abdominal approach. Consequently, we elected to perform an Altmeyer procedure, which involves a perineal rectosigmoidectomy and coloanal anastomosis. This approach is generally reserved for patients with a high anaesthetic risk or in cases of emergencies where there is an incarcerated or gangrenous prolapse. However, there are a number of disadvantages associated with the traditional Altmeyer's procedure. These include the risk of iatrogenic injury to the small bowel, or other low-lying viscera contained in a deep pouch of Douglas, difficulty in clearly identifying the pouch of Douglas, as well as having no means of testing the integrity of the coloanal anastomosis. We will demonstrate the use of laparoscopic assistance to address these challenges. Pictured here is the full thickness rectal prolapse of our patient prior to surgery. In the lithotomy position, Routine transambulical laparoscopy and pneumoperitoneum was established. Small bowel was swept out of the pouch of Douglas. Ensuring an empty pouch of Douglas reduces risk of iatrogenic bowel or visceral injury. A gauze swab was also placed into the pouch of Douglas to further protect against inadvertent injury to its contents. Pneumoperitoneum was then desufflated prior to beginning the perineal procedure. A Lone Star retractor was applied to efface the anus. 0.5% bupivacaine with adrenaline was then injected into the vascular submucosal plane. A full thickness circumferential rectotomy was then performed. The rectal mucosa was first scored circumferentially with monopolar diathermy, 1 cm proximal to the dentate line, and then divided. The rectal muscle layer was then divided to expose the inverted pouch of Douglas. At this stage, pneumoperitoneum was re-established which produces a characteristic frog's vocal sac appearance. In this case, the appearance is only subtle. The frog's vocal sac can be better appreciated in this photo from a previous case. This appearance identifies the inverted pouch of Douglas, guiding the precise division of the sac and entry into the peritoneum. Entry into the correct plane was confirmed by an efflux of carbon dioxide, after which pneumoperitoneum was switched off. Using this technique, only brief periods of pneumoperitoneum are required which we believe is better tolerated by high anaesthetic risk patients when compared to that incurred during prolonged abdominal pr approaches, such as in an abdominal rectopexy. The mesorectum was then divided circumferentially using a handheld ligature for hemostasis. Removal of the gauze swab placed laparoscopically confirms entry into the correct space. An anterior levatoplasty was performed using 2O polydeoxinone sutures. This strengthens the pelvic floor to mitigate against recurrence prolapse. A posterior levatoplasty was then performed. The proximal rectum was then divided anteriorly using monopolar diathermy. Before further division, 
a stay suture was placed anteriorly for orientation. Here we begin the formation of the hand-sewn coloanal anastomosis using 3O vicral sutures. The sutures were placed circumferentially at each hour mark around the clock face positions. The rectotomy was then performed by dividing the rectum posteriorly. Further sutures were placed to complete the clock face. Pneumoperitoneum was then re-established for a final time to perform a reverse underwater leak test. The pelvis is laparoscopically lavaged with saline while the anastomosis is examined for saline leakage. In this case, there was no leak detected. This is an example of a positive leak test with fluid efflux posteriorly. The identification of a leak guides the precise placement of further sutures to secure the anastomosis. A digital assessment was then performed to confirm the repair. This procedure produced a good outcome with the patient's VASI incontinence score improving from 24 preoperatively to 16 postoperatively, with nil clinical recurrence of rectal prolapse. In summary, the advantages of a laparoscopic assisted Altmeyer procedure include Decreased risk of iatrogenic injury to small bowel or other viscera potentially contained within a deep pouch of Douglas, achieved by sweeping of small bowel loops out of the pouch of Douglas, as well as through the laparoscopic placement of a gauze swab. Clear identification of the pouch of Douglas using the frog's vocal sac appearance and the laparoscopically placed gauze swab. Confirmation that all redundant sigmoid colon has been delivered and resected. The reverse underwater air leak test of the coloanal anastomosis to guide the placement of further sutures to secure the anastomosis. Altogether, the total duration of pneumoperitoneum required is shorter than that required for a rectal prolapse repaired by abdominal approach, so will likely be better tolerated by high anaesthetic risk populations. We recommend this technique as an adjunct to the traditional Altmeyer prolapse repair, especially in patients with a clinically or radiologically evident enteroseal where there is potential for injury to the pouch of Douglas contents.